50 years ago today, a sniper climbed to the top of the University of Texas Tower and from there shot 14 people along with an unborn child. Charles Whitman had already killed his own wife and mother earlier that morning. Today, the university remembered those who lost their lives. Fox 7's Casey Claiborne is live from UT with that story. Casey. Mike, as the University of Texas puts it, what happened on this day five decades ago seemed to suspend time for the campus. Today, the clock on top of the UT Tower is frozen at 1148, the time the horrific ordeal began. Silence at 1148 AM, followed by taps. A stirring tribute to those who died 50 years before. August 1st, 1966 was another hot summer Monday. Charles Whitman went to the top of the UT Tower armed with guns and ammo and started shooting. Young Austin police officer Ray Martinez had been told to go to the university to help divert traffic, but soon found himself on the way to the top of the tower to stop Whitman. I got on the elevator, said a prayer because I thought I might die. Martinez, civilian Alan Crum, and other officers like Houston McCoy raced to stop the threat. Martinez remembers firing at the sniper. And I kind of charged him, shooting as I went, and hollering at McCoy to fire. Martinez says he emptied his pistol. Whitman started going down, but was still holding his weapon. I wasn't going to let him shoot me, so I reached back, got the shotgun from McCoy, and went and shot him one more time. Once that was done, I waved the shotgun, and I said, we got him, I got him, or I don't even know what I said, but anyway, stop firing. Martinez was in attendance at Monday's emotional Tower Garden rededication ceremony. The university unveiled a brand new memorial listing the names of those killed. UT President Gregory Finvez says it's long overdue. In the ensuing decades, there was an instinct to shield the university by not associating it with a singular crime to not allow tragedy to define the tower, the central symbol of this institution. Shooting victim Sandra Wilson met up with the man who saved her life, Chip Jansen. And I saw her get shot. I saw her go down like somebody hit her with a sledgehammer. Wilson had spoken with Jansen by phone over the years, but she hasn't seen him since 1966. I, I think the uh, people that did the rescuing should get you know, more commemoration because, you know, he saved me. Rick Cloud was in a mechanical engineering class on August 1st, 1966, when he saw the events unfold outside of the classroom window. And I got home and they put his picture on the screen and I went, oh my God, he was supposed to be sitting in the seat in front of me in class. So he could have just come to that class and shot all of us instead. Cloud says he studied with Charles Whitman. He was a little different, preppy dresser, but uh, had uh, extreme nail biting, uh, just very extreme. That was the one thing I really remember about him. Claire Wilson was pregnant when Whitman's bullet struck her, killing an unborn child. My son Cirox says, Mom, we'll get to raise that baby in heaven. I'll have a brother. Wilson is the co-chair of the Texas Tower Memorial Committee. She's been working to make this memorial happen for years. She's glad there's finally a proper way to remember those who didn't survive. Their relatives have come and tried to see where it happened, and there was a, a name. So, I'm, you know, I think that's a really good thing. You're going to want to stay tuned to Fox 7 because coming up in about 30 minutes is a piece called Telling the Story 50 Years Later. Our station, KTBC, was the only established TV station in town uh, at the time. Journalists like Neil Spells and Gary Pickle were here on campus risking their lives to get some of the footage you just saw. I interviewed those two gentlemen, and we've got a whole story coming up in about 30 minutes about the journalism coming out of KTBC that day. You're going to want to see this. Stay tuned. Back to you.